So I never knew that there was a huge disparity of practice between the military and also uh, the civilian world. Something you need to understand is it is the same practice but different governing bodies. Was really good on my day ones. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I decided to do this video because I tried to do a vlog, but like it just failed because I couldn't get any clips yesterday because of how busy uh, it was. What not a better vlog to shoot now since I am sitting in my car and I'm waiting to pass some time. And today I'm going to discuss the main differences between civilian and military nursing. Now I mentioned that there are different governing bodies and what I mean by that is state versus federal. In the civilian sector you have basically state governing bodies like the uh, Board of Registered Nursing that uh, govern practices and jurisdictions of law that you have to abide by within that state, right? Kind of like in California where they mandate a two to one for ICU nurse, four to one for med surge tele nurses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes to the civilian practice, it's a little bit more free, uh, what I've noticed. And the acuity is a lot higher. When it comes to acuity, I've been tripled before. And this wasn't in California, but this was like in uh, Virginia. I've been tripled with uh, ICU patients and it's not fun. And it's very dangerous because now you're basically playing step down on steroids. And anyone who's ever been tripled understands that uh, the practice is very dangerous when that happens. Brandon, having having two, two heavy patients is, is is already tiring enough and the acuity with two very sick patients is it's very stressful you, you guys could empathize with that especially when it comes to two hemodynamically unstable patients you also have the ability to put in orders under a practitioner's name and I, I've done that plentiful times in the civilian world to that extent you know you have to build a relationship with the providers to be able to do that and there has to be a, a fine line of trust when it comes to that. You could up and quit in the civilian world. Let's say, uh, let's say you're orienting and you're just like, why, why is this unit so bad? You have the opportunity to get up and leave as you please. You could also call out sick whenever you please. Those are the things that I miss. However, however, by the time you get to a certain age, you start to think of uh, job security, uh, your retirement, and what you're going to be doing 10, 20 years from now. I am at that age and you need to understand that with the military, there is a security. Absolutely, when you're young, go do everything you want, go travel, go do it all. That's exactly what I did in my 20s. You guys saw that, I, I did travel nursing. You've seen the vlogs. There's a ton of vlogs of me doing travel nursing and doing, just doing a whole bunch of different jobs. When I came into the military, there was the understanding of, uh, I did everything I had to do in my 20s and partied, traveled, etc. And I did that. Now the major difference with the federal government when it comes to practice is I cannot, I cannot call out like I'd mentioned. There is that responsibility that you have to uh, abide by. I can't go up and have vacations whenever I want. We call it leave in the military. Like we have to put in requests. And even if I wanted to go overseas, the process to go overseas takes about a two to three month process. And you have to tell your leadership at way ahead of time before you're going. And you have to put it inside the schedule ahead of time before you're going. And with the military, it is governed by the federal government. So in times of disaster, in times of need, in, dis in times of war, you are activated to do certain things. Kind of like when uh, Biden activated from 2020 to 2021, when he act activated the federal government uh, workers to go and do the COVID missions. Uh, that was that was something I was a part of. When they tell you to jump high, you better either jump high or higher than their high, if that makes sense. Basically, if they tell you to do something, you better do it, especially if it's someone with rank. A rank, rank structure is very important in the military. There is a certain level of practice that you need to abide by. I'll probably discuss this in another video regarding an issue I had, but uh, I'm gonna wait till time passes to discuss that. We stay within our lanes in the military when it comes to nursing practice. The RT manages the vents. You get in trouble for touching the vents. But you can't put in your own orders and the doctors have to put in all the orders. So that's a good part. And the, one of the major differences that I've seen in the military is if you come in with like 
very little experience, you will start off as a med surgeon nurse or a clinic nurse. And then you go from there, you build up. By the time you hit like critical care where I'm at, it's kind of hard to like maneuver unless you go like back to school or if you go through the leadership route. So it is important to basically build up your resume when it comes to the military. However, I will say this. Let's say you get this experience. You don't, you know, you don't like the full 20, but you do get four years out of the military. The civilian world doesn't know what you did in the military. You did a lot of, you did a lot of officership. You did a lot of leadership. You did a lot of things that you don't do in the civilian world. A lot of the duties that fall upon you as an officer, you don't do that extra stuff in the civilian world, right? That's a, that's another thing I failed to mention is like in, in the military world, you have. A, officer responsibility so for me as i mentioned in some of my videos i'm what you call a subject matter expert when it comes to uh, my field of informatics so I, I am actually in charge of the icus and i oversee uh clairvia and i practically touch base with all the icus make sure that they're hitting all their um, patient outcomes so that's like one of the things that i do extra on top of like the education and everything else it, it might sound like a lot but it, in the beginning it's not and it really does depend on your level of heart and what you do okay get, getting back to get going out into the civilian world. When you do leave the military, you're not allowed to disclose certain things. However, you are allowed to discuss the things you've done in the Air Force, you know, with certain limitations. Civilians don't know what you did. Why? Because it's the government. Your, 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 your security clearance is secret. So they don't know what you did. So when you're applying to these jobs, guess what? You will qualify for more than half of the jobs on the market, even leadership positions. And that's what I've discussed in the past is there is a glass ceiling that exists and the military breaks it because now you've done all those jobs and you're capable. You're, you are capable because of what they did for you. I know I may have missed a couple things. Um, that's just practically the surface of what I uh, what I've experienced so far and I've been doing a lot of charge nurse duties it's kind of stressful it's a different kind of stress because like uh, it, military nursing is like the acuity is not bad that's what I failed to mention the acuity is it's cake my least hardest day in the civilian side doesn't touch the surface of my hardest day here if that, if that makes sense it's like it's just it's a walk in the park because of all my past experiences and I I don't take that for granted why because you know I'm an outlier in this field so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, I'll try to get this up soon and then uh, we'll go from there uh, I'm gonna head in I'm actually orienting a student today I'll talk to y'all later I hope you guys enjoyed that vlog smash the thumbs up if you guys want more uh, videos regarding like military nursing and we'll go from there all right I'll take care